Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Tuesday, June 18, 2024. Our reading today comes to us from Genesis chapter 16, reading from verse 1 to 11. And it says, Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bear him no children. And she had an handmaid, an Egyptian whose name was Agar. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now the Lord had restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Agar her maid, the Egyptian. After Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram to be his wife. And he went in unto Agar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid unto thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thine hand. Do to her as it please thee. And when Sarai dealt harshly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Sur. Sir, And he said, Agar, Sarah's handmaid, whence comest thou, and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I fled from the face of my mistress Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, exceedingly. I will multiply thy seed exceedingly that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord had heard thy affliction. Amen. We thank God this morning for his words. Now, this is a lesson for all of us to learn from god don't need your help in his plan for us all he needs is for us to stand still and to watch him work if god says that he is going to do something is going to do something and when he needs your cooperation into the plan he will let you know but God don't need your help that's why he's God so when God involves us his thing is not is not out of a need but he's just making us a part of the process and as I said when he needs you to be a part of the process, he will tell you. But aside from that, you just need to just relax yourself. But here it seems that Sarah and Abram, because he listened to his wife. But first, before I even go there, we all know where all of this is coming from you remember when god was having a conversation with abram and he told him that he was going to provide him with an ear or a seed and that he will multiply that seed that seed as the star of the sky because remember abram and his wife they did not have any children and for years and years they were going along, no children, no children. And it was discouraging for them because they wanted children. And so the conversation came up and God said that, look here, don't worry yourself. I'm going to make you the father of nations. Okay? 
and so that's where this story backdrop that's where this is an this is a continuation from that conversation so after god told abram that he would have blessed him with a child of course the wait after that conversation apparently was long or too long in abram and sarah's eye and so they were very eager they were very anxious to have a child and so because nothing seems to be happening Sarah came up with a brilliant plan she said that she would have give Agar her handmaid to Abram for him to bring children up by her for Sarah so in other words she was gonna use Agar as a surrogate mother already you can see where this is was already you can see where this was a bad idea a bad idea and so many levers because there is nothing more brutal than a woman's scorn eh? so i know this this plan of hers would never work and so of course she had the conversation with her husband and he agreed and i'm telling you abram really loved his wife to agree with something like that huh but they went ahead and he had a child by her now when agar get pregnant she became queen of the house hmm. so here so here now sarah was looked down on because that's what the reading say here you know so let's see what let, let, let's go through it again it says that and when and he went in unto her verse 4 and she conceived and when she saw that she had conceived her mistress sarah was despised in agar's eye so in other words agar no despise sarah and now sarah is realizing in verse 5 that she had made one of the biggest mistakes of her life because no she has put herself in a position to be disrespected in her own house but you see when we go against god's plan and when we sin there comes a time when we must bear the consequences and here what sarah did now to compile the situation remember i know it was her mistakes in the first for her mistake in the first place and then she compiled the mistake by running away and here now she compiled the mistake by treating hagar harshly whatever it is that she 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 did it was enough to make hagar run away hmm? so you see if you know that you cannot live with the choices that you make don't make them in the first place because there will be consequences and if you can't bear it just don't do it just don't do it because it is gonna put you in a position to further compile your situation and make matters worse just like what sarah did and i'm not saying that it was okay for agar to become disrespectful to her to her mistress no but sarah brought that on on herself because she wanted to help god because that's what she tell herself god was taking too long and how many of us are guilty of the same thing we want to give god a helping hand and so we run ahead of him we don't want to wait god is taking too long so i need to do it my way so that i can get the result that i need 
and often time, all the time, it turns out sour for us. And who do we run back to? Asking for help? God. God. So it might as well you waited in the first place. But you know, despite the circumstances of the situation, God already started the process of holding up his end of the bargain. Even though that wasn't the original plan, God turned the situation around. Still, what did he say to Agar? He says to her in verse 10 that what? He will multiply her seed exceedingly. So, Ishmael is going to be a nation. You get what I'm saying? So now, the nation will be coming through not only Isaac, the promised son, but also Ishmael, whom the Lord turned that situation into a blessing. And so, what am I saying here? Am I, I'm saying that even though we make our mistakes, God can still turn that mistake around into a blessing. But, let me put that in. But, it is not a green light to say, go and make mistakes. Go and make mistakes so that God can turn it around for you. No. No. But, I am saying that we need to trust God's plan to lead us because he knows what he's doing. And if Abraham and Sarah had only waited, if they had only waited, then they wouldn't have to do what they did and, and, put, and put the young lady and themselves in that position. And so I pray that we can take a page from their experience so that we don't make the same mistake that they do. You may ask God for something, wait. Patiently wait until your appointed time come. God is not a man that he should lie. And his word, according to scripture, he says, will not return to him void. So you can be guaranteed that what he says, it will and shall come to pass. And I say, Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Amen.